As you can imagine, with theatre, it's quite a difficult thing to preserve a, a record of a live performance. For most of them, once the production's over, that's it. And so we collect all sorts of uh, material, photographs, uh, programmes, posters and all the rest of it to try and cover the sort of history of a production and also allow uh, people in the future to understand the history of performance and how it's developed. And one of the best ways, obviously, to do that is costume. What I love, and I love as a designer and as a director, is to see the detail that you can't possibly see past the 10th row. They're so recognized, you know, over 50 million people have seen The Lion King, but a fraction of that have seen The Lion King close up. And that's what can happen here when the audience comes to the V&A to see these pieces. The department here has got about 2,500 costumes, some of them going back to the 19th century. But um, obviously these are a fantastic addition because The Lion King is obviously not only hugely successful, but I think it's sort of passed into kind of popular memory. This collection that we're in the middle of honors some of the greatest designers, some of the greatest, um, frankly, fabricators working in the theater today. And so what you see behind me um, are these two extraordinary costumes designed by Julie Taymor um, from The Lion King, which runs here in London. When I was working on The Lion King, I'd never been to Africa, but I had lots of books and lots of videos, lots of films, and I saw these complicated, beautiful geometric kuba cloths and uh, kinte cloths and various fabrics from different regions. And it wasn't really about a specific region in Africa. It's not to rip off other cultures and just stick them down exactly. These are based on character and my own sculpture style. So it's, it's inspired, but then it's come out, hopefully, in an original way. When you look at Sarabi's corset and you see all this individual beading, these beautiful shells and beads, and you look at a costume that's both elegant and at the same time, she's a fierce lioness protecting her pride. And what Julie does is keep all these elements alive at once. I think it has a genuine sense of Africa comes through it. And I think, you know, that's why it appeals all around the world. It just doesn't appeal in New York and London. It's, it's, it's been stages all over the world. And it's, it's got that universality. And very, very few musicals ever get that. It is the essence of theatre itself, and when theatre is great, there's nothing better. You actually see people in the legs of the elephant, and see that sexy dancer moving the cheetah along, and the strings that are attached to her head, and all of those things are what move the audience. You would think showing the simple techniques would ruin the magic. It's quite the opposite. It is the magic. The whole thing makes you feel like you're part of a, a real a, a history. And to be in theatre in England in this beautiful museum, it's a great honour. To have these pieces honoured for the art that they are is uh, hugely valuable, just to recognise the power that's within that.